one of the biggest fun parts of being a captain or an officer driving a ship is the actual driving the ship, maneuvering the ship. We have uh, two propellers um, with a so-called controllable pitch system, which uh, makes the maneuvering far more accurate. Uh, very specific uh, rudders that uh, uh, can do a lot more than a simple rudder called Becker rudders and also bow thruster. So with this ship here we are able to uh, keep on a station uh, or to maneuver the ship sideways, forward, aft. On a ship like this you do it all uh, by hand and yourself, which is a lot of fun. It's actually much harder to uh, keep the ship stationary in one spot than it is to have it drive in, uh, in a straight line. Uh, we have to continuously change um, the engines, um, both engines and adjusting the thruster to keep the ship stationary as the ROV is operating, um, especially with changing currents and winds. So it's a constant, constant battle between um, the ship's movement and uh, the exterior elements. We do have to collaborate. We've got um, geologists and water chemists and biologists on board, so we all have to make sure that everybody gets something from a dive. And the best way of doing that is to have one site where everybody can get a little bit of something. So this is one of those sites. So we can get water chemistry for Amy, uh, we can get shrimp sampling for me, we can also get some snails for me, and we can also get some rocks for um, the two geologists on board as well. Oh, sweet. Oh, come on. <laughs> don't give Yeah, don't, don't lose them. Absolutely. So right now we're in one of the highest temperature parts of the hydrothermal field. The temperatures are in excess of 325 degrees. The fluids are actually boiling, which is very unusual for seafloor hydrothermal vents. If you couple a piece of the actual chimney that's forming from the fluids with an evaluation of the fluids themselves, you can get in a lot of information about what's going on at the site. Oh, it's brilliant. It's so exciting. Um, I say this is my first ROV cruise. This is the first time I've been able to be in charge of sampling and directing what we do, and it's fantastic. Um, it's just great to be able to sample these animals and take them home and the, the, this kind of feeling of discovery in the van, it, everyone's got it, we're all crowding around the screens, getting our phones out and it's just, it's fantastic, it's amazing, a really good feeling. Submotor off. Oh my god. Right, where to start? Amazing. Pick pick one up, pick one of the hairy ones up, feel the it. Hairy ones? Yeah, yeah, they're not spiky. They're really soft. Oh, I don't want to pull them off. It's okay, you won't hurt him. Yeah. How cool is that? God, biology is so disgusting. There's a reason I studied rocks. That's really, really funny. Ooh. More? Uh, there will be. Is it all? 
So what we're doing is we're opening up the major samplers and we took these in the really high temperature fluid. One of them was taken in 300 degree fluid and the other one was boiling at 325. I will analyze it um, for pH. I will take its temperature to see how much it cooled while it was rising. And then I will um, fix the fluids so that we can analyze them uh, when we get back to shore. You can see um, it looks sort of clear coming through the tube, but it's pretty black in the bottle. So this is true black smoker water from a 325 degree C uh, boiling hydrothermal vent. So, yeah. I've got lots of shrimp, I've got lots of snails, I've got some crabs, uh, I've got some scale worms. Yeah, everything I went down for. It's great. Well, I can already tell you that these shrimp are pretty cool because in here we've got some females that have eggs inside their carapace, which I'll grab one and show you in a moment. And we've also got a crab. We have a lot of shrimp, in fact. Do you want to have a look? I'm pretty sure those are egg masses. That's disgusting. That's because you're not a biologist. Rocks suck. Anyway. None of these, oh, this is great. So this female actually has eggs on her pleopods. So that's really interesting because it means that this shrimp broods its eggs, which not all shrimp do. So it'd be interesting to find out what species this one is. That's very, that's very, really, really cool. Look at this, this is, uh, this is all from one single dive. And uh, so I am, I am very happy to get this many samples and uh, this uh, sort of high quality of samples. I mean, if you just look at how beautiful these samples are, um, they're always a big hit when you bring samples like this on board and the, the crew and uh, the ROV pilots, they're always clamoring to get little pieces. Um, but from a scientific point of view, especially for the kind of work that I do, it's actually, you know, ugly samples like this that are, uh, that are the most important. And therefore, this one might actually give us the most information on the history of hydrothermal venting at the Neo uh, South Volcano. So, one's pretty and one I think will have the greatest scientific value. Yeah, I think when we first came here, we understood from the high resolution bathymetry and the topography that the, uh, this was an unusual volcanic setting. An explosive eruption on the flank of a large arc volcano. We were able to put an overlay on the seafloor of geological processes. This has never really been done before at this sort of scale, in particular, uh, these maps are created at about one, a scale of about 1 to 1,000. That means that one centimeter on the map is equal to about 10 meters on the seafloor. This is something that we haven't been able to do without the kind of technology that uh, has been used here uh, on this cruise. The maps that I'm creating now are just rough drafts and we will create digitally rendered uh, versions of these maps that can then be analyzed. We can make cross sections of the maps and look at stratigraphic sections, thicknesses of volcanic units, timing of volcanic units, the sequence of events of volcanic eruptions. And we can do this all in a quantitative way uh, now once the maps have been um, digitally rendered. And we'll put together a story of how the volcano erupted, when hydrothermal activity began, why hydrothermal activity appears to have been uh, waning and uh, what the future of this volcano might be. So we have uh, recorded a number of sequences also using the stereo camera and it turned out that it was actually possible here on board to do the 3D reconstruction and motion estimation for, for the cameras. We still had some issues with the um, 
live navigation, but it turned out that these sequences are useful for processing and we already had the first results for reconstruction here. Yeah, we have recorded several terabytes of data, so we have a lot of work to do to reconstruct um, the environment we have recorded. Um, we are very happy with uh, um, the outcome so far. We got a lot of new data, so our algorithms were adapted to deal with this new environment. So we have a lot of improvements. I have a very long list to do uh, how our system can be improved and how to make the whole process a bit more smooth and uh, to make the live reconstruction faster and more accurate. We have to look into all the other data we have recorded and hopefully we can get a large 3D model of the whole environment. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was just absolutely amazing. <laughs> that is so cool. We've got a hell of a lot of shrimp in there. Bacterial mat. That's fantastic. Nice. That's really cool. Next in line. I've seen it a couple of times. We have had the longest dive of the Ropos ROV ever. 74 hours during which we mapped the entire crater without leaving any gaps. We have collected around uh, 40 hours of 4K video, close to a quarter million still images. So this crater, this vent field, has basically gone from an unknown place somewhere on the bottom of the ocean to one of the best studied, most intensively studied hydrothermal fields in the world within just one cruise. That's a tremendous success. I have no idea how long it will take us to put it together. I am guessing on something on the order of one to three months, at the end of which there will be a high resolution point cloud model that we will be translating in all sorts of other forms with the ultimate goal that the scientists will be able to link all their observations into this model.